what do you believe right now that's making you feel this way? And when you analyse it, you realise how irrational you can be at times. Every single one of our major customers and minor customers all shut their doors overnight. It's not sales per se, but the outcome of it is because people get to know you, they get to see you. Making those efficiencies to maximise service profits as well as just product profits. When you lose the enthusiasm, that's the point to move on. Scaling up a business isn't easy. If it were, we wouldn't have less than 4% of businesses scaling beyond 10 employees or around a million pound turnover level and less than 1% beyond 50 employees. But the contribution that we make as owner managers to our economies is immense and should never be underestimated. Yet it can be a tough gig for all of us at times. And only other business owners truly understand the challenges that we face. And through Scale Up Radio, we aim to help make things a little easier. We interview guests who have been where you are now and may have faced some of the challenges that you are facing. And they offer their thoughts and advice on what has worked for them as well as what didn't. And we've also combined many of the lessons from these interviews and also through working with hundreds of owner managers over the last 10 years or so into a practical scale-up handbook that we've called the Entrepreneurial Scale-Up System, or ESIS. And it's for owner managers like you and me as we navigate our own scale-up journey. And you can order a copy through your favorite online book retailer or by going to all the W's, esisgroup.co.uk www.esusgroup.co.uk Hello and welcome to another people-inspiring episode of Scale Up Radio. I'm Granger Forson. You can find me at www.bizsmart-gloucestershire.co.uk or find me on LinkedIn. Today, we are delving into the fascinating world of HR with Kelly Tucker, the vibrant owner of HR Star. Providing support to businesses in the UK, Kelly's knack of strategy and people engagement has made her a formidable force in the industry. If you've ever wondered about the true power of HR in a business, this episode's for you. We delve into what it means to truly engage employees, the importance of aligning company values, the crucial role of HR in facilitating this alignment. We explore the necessary practices to attract and retain top talent in an entrepreneurial setting, including the significance of onboarding, recognition, and promoting employee well-being. Kelly's not just an HR expert, but she's also an entrepreneurial mastermind, having navigated the tricky waters of setting up her own business. She gets real about her journey and the challenges she faced, like managing young children while starting a business and learning how to say no and how she thrives through it all. She also talks about the importance of having the right team and the value of turning to experts to handle tasks outside her realm, something any business owner can relate to. As a woman who believes in creating an ideal working environment for her team, prioritizing self-care and maintaining a healthy work-life balance, Kelly's insight extends far beyond business strategies. Today's episode is not only about how to grow a successful business, it's also about how to cultivate a fulfilling life. So let's jump right in and learn from the trailblazing journey of Kelly Tucker, where people are not just a resource, but the heart of a business. Hello, Kelly Tucker. Welcome to Scale Up Radio. Please introduce yourself and your business to our audience. Hi there. Uh, I am Kelly Tucker. I own and run uh, HR Star. We are a HR consultancy providing HR and recruitment support to businesses, predominantly in the Cotswolds, but also further afield and um, um, sort of throughout the UK. HR support, we'll definitely talk about that, but give us an understanding of, the, of your business. You know, how, how big are you? How long have you been going? Sure. So I set up HR Star. It was oh, it's got to be approximately eight and a half years ago now after working in house HR. So I started my career as a HR administrator and I worked my way up to a HR strategic business partner. And then after doing um, in-house HR roles for approximately 15 years, I set up HR Star. Um, as I said, we are based predominantly in um, and around the Cotswolds. So we have a, an office in Cheltenham and the team are in and around there. We are a relatively small team but growing um it, there are seven of us currently but we are on the lookout for new team members uh due to business growth so um yeah in a nutshell that's that's hr star 
Brilliant. Well, that's a great, great size team already in terms of your, your growth and development, seven people. Awesome. I'm sure we're going to really explore um, some of those thoughts. So your customers, who are they and you know how, how do they come to you and how do you delight them? Okay, so we predominantly work with businesses that are small to medium size. However, that does vary um, and has varied over the, the duration that we've been in business. Um, but in terms of, I suppose, if you like, our, our um, sort of ideal business that we like to work with, it will be entrepreneurial-led businesses. They tend to be more so in the creative space, so thinking around um, digital marketing or marketing, PR, animation. Um, and again, in terms of size, that varies. Um, anything from, I suppose, our smallest client would have around five to 10 employees, but then we also work with businesses who have nearly 200, but obviously how we work with those businesses differs depending on the size. So uh, we we work very much with a focus on employee engagement. Um, we believe that if we look to ensure that we have, and we create and maintain highly engaged teams by creating great employee experience through ensuring that people are um, valued in, in different ways that, that you're going to have a productive and motivated team. And obviously if we have those, then we're going to have a more successful business because naturally you're going to retain good people. You're going to attract good people. You're going to have less performance issues, less issues with high absence, churn, et cetera. Um, and I think we delight the people that we work with because we, we're not, um, an agency, sorry, a consultancy that you call as and when you've got a, an issue. We're not like a, a, a consultancy that you wheel in when you need to hire and fire. We work with our clients. So we become an extension. We are their people partner. We are their HR team. Um, and we are working with them on that ongoing basis so that we are doing things to ensure that they don't have the, you know, the, the scary situations or, or the difficult conversations as much or the problems with retention. Um, so I think, you know, the clients that we're working with uh, like working with us because you get the benefit of having a full HR team without the overhead associated with that. And you get to have that objectivity by the fact that we aren't part of the, the, the payroll. We're not, you know, the, whilst we're part of the team, we're not an employee. So um, they can dial up and down what level of service they need, which part of what we offer they need at any time. And they, they, you know, our clients are always really delighted in terms of how involved and how proactive that we are when we work with them. So I'm a small SME. Um, I'm you know taking on some some staff. Maybe I've got three staff already. Um, um, you know I'm in the creative field. So how would you go about engaging with me to making sure that I'm starting to do you know that that really valuable work? And I, I totally agree in terms of you know employee engagement. You know it's one of the reasons I set up my small business. So how do you go about doing that? So we do what's called a people strategy session. So we'll spend some time with the um, senior management team or the leadership team, business owner, whoever's sort of key in, in driving and running the business. And we will um, basically ask them a, a, a lot of questions around why they started their business, why they're doing what they do, what they're trying to achieve what kind of growth they're looking for, how quickly they want that to happen, what kind of culture that they've got or want um, to have. Um, and then we look then at every area of the employee life cycle and we'll ask them what it currently looks like and what they want it to look like. Um, and then from that, we can create a people plan. And that people plan will be very much aligned to that business plan and business goals because 99% of business won't be able to achieve that business plan and business goals without their people. So we need to ensure that it's aligned. So we need to ensure that we are able to have the right people at the right place at the right time. And that's what that people plan will do. If they are a small business who's recently set out on a growth journey, I will check everything from compliance. So do you have the correct contracts in place for your employees what your policies and procedures look like are they in a handbook are they you know um communicating throughout the business do people know what the policies and procedures are 
um, do, do we need to review those policies and procedures in terms of wanting to attract talent? Because as we know, people have different and you know expectations that are around the world of work and what they want and need from, from work. Yeah. So we'll look at everything from that through to right. Okay, so how are we going out there to attract great people are we ensuring do you have company values first of all if you don't let's create some with your people if you do okay are they just in a pretty picture or on a wall are we actually using our values to ensure that we you know we're living them through we know that culture obviously comes from values and behaviors so what are we doing to take those values off a page and actually make them real you know so that people feel that um when they come into the into the company so you know we want to use those values as well when we're recruiting so we ensure that we're bringing people who are going to be culture ad and already align with our values um, and then we look at what we're doing through that onboarding we know that um, onboarding people in the right way is 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 key to getting people engaged um, as soon as possible and how people are made to feel when they when they come to start a new um, role is 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 how they you know will like I say quickly be able to do that role and feel engaged with the business so we look at that um, the attraction recruitment strategy onboarding and then we'll look at everything through you know from how are we making sure that people are well rewarded and recognized? How are we tying that into our performance management systems? Are people clear on what the expectations are? Do they have role descriptions where they know what they need to do day to day and how they progress within, within the company? Um, we're looking at well-being, you know, are, are people looked after at work? You know, that's a key part of engagement. Um learning and development so within our team we have an l d expert so we do, do do work with um our clients doing a lot of coaching everything from confidence coaching leadership coaching management um development um through to then at the other side of the employee life cycle when people leave and people will leave your business for various reasons how are you making sure that that's a positive experience because we also know in this day and age with social media glass door etc people talk and people will go out and we want people to be a brand ambassador for our business and say hey i worked at hr star and it was great um and so we're making you know we want to make sure that we're making that end of the employee life cycle process as positive as it can be as well and and thinking about that anyway, it's important that we recognize that people are with us for a period of time in their life. And it is our, our role to develop them to be more successful. If they're more successful, they are for us. But if they leave, well, brilliant. I, I totally agree that you, you know, that that positive leaving event, you know, being being a brand ambassador, what a fantastic phrase that is. And I think that's absolutely right in terms of any growth of an individual, but also the growth of the business to be successful. Yeah, very, very interesting. And, and interesting, you start with with values and how values are unlocked in the business through behaviours. And we we do a smart strategy session with our clients and we start with values and how behaviours are, are managed in terms of doing that. And then we look at products and services and market fit, et cetera, and, and beyond there. Um, but it's interesting how we both start with that really vital aspect of, of values. So let, let's just explore a little bit more um, on, on values. You know, where do you think the values come from in, in an SME and how does a small business really unlock that potential? Yeah, I think with most business, they probably initially come from the founders in terms of, we all have our own values in terms of individuals. And I, and I suppose when we all set up business or go out to, to, you know, do business, we know what's important to us and what we value. But also I think it it's very much needs to be aligned to, to what, what you're offering as well. So for instance, at HR Star, we're about people. Like people are obviously everything in our business, what we do. And we always say, well, whilst there's a process in HR, we're, we're putting the people and the human into that. So yes, we'll follow a process but we'll never forget that there's a human involved in that and different humans and people react in different ways to things. So I think it's so easy, and, if, and I'm sure you find this as well, you know, to go out and say, let's do a value exercise. And everyone just comes up with the norm, like let's be respectful and honest and friendly. I was like, well, surely they're just a given, like we, sh we should do those things really anyway. But I think it's about trying to unlock actually what's going to, what is actually really important to us with what we're doing, what is going to make us different. So one of our values, which again, you could say is probably, you know, a, a quite a, a, a common one is integrity because we believe in the work that we do, integrity is really important because lots of times we're dealing with situations where 
obviously people are involved so it could be that they are you know we're dealing with a redundancy or a performance issue or a dismissal or, you know we're dealing with people with, and and they have life impacting consequences some you know these things so we want to act with integrity and you know when people say to me oh it must be so hard to do your job I hate your job when you've got to like let people go I said well it really does depend on one the reason why but also what's gone before that so if you believe that the way that you've handled that situation has been done with integrity that you've really put the person first and you've done everything you can to make sure that process is as humankind as it can be then no I don't feel bad because it's part of life you know people will get made redundant people unfortunately will be let go from roles or people will not perform and then I think if you know you're a business owner or manager and you've been really clear on your expectations and you've given people the support and tools to do their their job and they're not performing then it it should be expected that you're going to have a conversation with them about that but then it's also about ensuring that the people who are having those conversations are equipped to be able to have those in in the right way with integrity with compassion with could being you know constructive and so I think it's important when you're talking about values that you actually sit down and really think about when we operate within our business as in within our people within the business with each other with um, our clients customers etc how do we want to be operating how do we want to be seen what do we want it to feel like what do we want people to be saying and use that as that starting point when you're creating values and then look at right how are we then going to take those values ensure that people within the organization know what that means to be um honest or to you know to have integrity or you know something i've seen a lot of in, in recent work that I've been doing with clients who already have values, it's like we go above and beyond. Okay, but what does that actually mean? How are we defining that? Because what I might think is going above and beyond might be very different to somebody else. Um, so I think it's it's about being really clear on why you want the values or think the values that you have for your business are important, but then also how are you going to be living by those values as well? Yes, yeah. And I think um, values are how you bring them alive is the behaviors that you then demonstrate how that has. So I often talk to my clients about, you know, maybe think about the, the behaviors you're expecting you to do first, and then what those behaviors you'd expect of, of your people that are working with you in terms of doing that. Um, but also have that conversation. I wonder if, you know, your thought on this one is actually having an open this conversation within your leadership team once a week, once a fortnight, around values, but around where did the values com come in conflict? Because that's the other thing that happens with values. They do come in conflict sometimes in terms of doing things. And having that conversation, I think, is a really powerful way of trying to bring it alive. I wonder what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, it, it, you you know, that's spot on. You can't just do your values and it's not just like tick done, like let's move on. And I think, you know, it, that's as well, like I talk about with my clients, employee engagement is never done. It's a continual thing because people will be going through different stages as well within their life, which changes what they want and need from work, which will also change how you um, engage with them or how they feel engaged at work. So when I was younger, for me, the types of things that would motivate and engage me within a business would be, you know, the opportunity to progress, the opportunity to have more like flexibility so that I could potentially, you know, go and be more social sure um the opportunity to to have perks that are related to that like cinema tickets or you know um shopping vouchers etc as i've gone through my own you know life cycle things have changed when i had young children for me the most important thing then was to be able to flex my eyes around children to be able to to have childcare vouchers to help with my childcare costs etc so i think it's important to to always be looking at how are we ensuring that the values are being being you know brought alive within the organisation? But also talking about them, like you say, at, you know, regularly at not just at annual appraisals, but at you know regular one to ones that you're holding with with your your people or at leadership meetings, you know, board meetings. Okay, let's just check in on our values. Is there anything that's happened recently that's well, that we think we're not aligned to or that's conflicting with that? Or and what's the reasons why? I think values should be something that is just part of that day to day conversation within any business yes yeah uh we could talk about this for a very yes. long time i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure but let's 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 move on let's talk about hr star so mm -hmm. what 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 makes you different what do you strive to be best at mm. Um, so I, I do think HR star are different to other HR consultancies, and I'm sure every HR consultancy says that, and it was so we're different. But I genuinely believe that we are in that 
um, anyone who follows me on LinkedIn will know that I'm quite outspoken and direct in terms of, of my approach because I am really passionate about what I believe. And I and I believe that, yes, we have to follow certain processes and procedures within HR. And of course, we have to be compliant and, and, and fall in line with legislation. But I also believe that HR has had a really bad rep for a long time. Like it, it has been seen as that function that you wheel out when you want to hire and fire, that everyone kind of like creates when they see HR come in and you're referred to as HR like for such a long time I worked within a business and they referred to HR I was the only person in HR I was like my name's Kelly like and and you know so and people don't want to be friends with HR or if people think if you are friends with HR you're going to get favorable treatment and so I and I think HR are different because we are changing that reputation. The types of businesses that we work with, these entrepreneurial led businesses or false thinking, and they're in the creative space. They really get that brand identity and the, and the values concept. We understand that, oh, actually, people are everything to our business. So actually, HR should be feeding into so much more than just let's look at the, you know, the annual performance review. Let's look at recruitment. Everything and pretty much within a business will impact or involve people. And so the business that we're working with now understand that. And we are involved. Like we are, we do have a seat at the table when they're, you know, they're talking about big business decisions and things that are going to affect the people within the business. And I'm also seeing more and more now people wanting to actually engage their people i think for a while it was seen as fluffy and it was like a nice thing to do and oh aren't we trendy and like a google or you know um you know some funky silicon valley company but i think um, more and more people are understanding actually no i i do you know those who want to grow their businesses are saying i, I want to do it right i want to look after my people i want to i want the best people working for me um, and they're the types of businesses that we're working with. And for me, that's really exciting who, you know, they'll say, right, we want to grow and we know that we can't do it without understanding that, you know, what our people want and need without being, you know, able to invest in our people. We understand that we're going to have to develop them, we reward them, and we want to do that. And we actually want to do it rather than just say we want to do it. Um, and so f- to be able to work with businesses like that, to be able to make a massive change and impact in the way that businesses are treating their people and be leading that in lots of organizations that we're working with, that we are kind of like heading that up. Um, that's what I think makes us different. There's loads of consultancies out there who will just be that place you can go to as and when you need some support and you've got an employee issue, you want to check in, you need a contract, you ask for that. And I'm I'm not saying that there's not a place for those HR consultancies. Of course there is. And lots of businesses want that kind of support. And that's absolutely fine. But for me, it's, it's something different. I want to do something different. I want to work with businesses who want to do it differently. And that's why I think HR Star are different because that's, you know, what we do and what we love to do. Uh, I think that's really, really inspiring in terms of that, because I think what, what may summarize really, you know, there are people that just want compliance. Yeah. yeah. Because there are rules out there of the land. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we're in England. So therefore we have to follow those rules and we just want to know those rules. But actually, if you really want to grow and develop your business, and this is what I do with my clients, it's your people and inspiring your people and finding the right people like yourself that can help you learn how to really develop that skill of inspiring your people and development. Yes, I can really see that. And I can see that in the passion. And yes, we do follow you on LinkedIn and we love, love your videos, my business partner and I. So uh, yes, I I highly recommend people uh, (laughs) go go and go and look that up. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Got a great understanding of your passion uh, and and what you guys are about in terms of helping. So let's talk about the business. Yeah. Because we're we're a business uh, um, um, podcast in terms of that. So, you know, why did you why did you start what was the moment you went right this that this is this is where we're going hr star what was that moment in time so i don't think i ever really saw myself as entrepreneurial or someone who wanted to head up a business to be honest i didn't even set out to have a career in hr so basically i got a temp role after being made redundant from a previous role where I worked as a PA in a large manufacturing business, really successful one. And it was basically to keep my dad quiet because I was 21. I was still living at home. And he was like, Kelly, you really need to go and get a job. And I was just like, yeah, dad, like, sure. At some point I will. And then it got to the stage where I was like, I really should go and get a job now. So to show willing, I registered with a recruitment agency. They said, we've got a temp role for you. 
is it the Wild Farm and Wetlands Trust, which is the charity that's based near where I lived at the time, in the HR team, they're just setting up a new HR department and they need an administrator, do you fancy it? And I was just like, yeah, sure. It was local, it sounded all right. So I literally went there in my head thinking about, I'll just do this for a little while until I find something else, um, get my dad off my back, earn a bit of money, happy. And then I stayed there for eight years. And um, so I worked, like I said, there for eight years, started as a temp in the in the HR department doing admin, learned from the like grassroots right up to the strategic side of things, was working as their HR manager there. And then I left there when I went on maternity leave to have my first son, who was just turned 15. And um, I decided when I was on maternity leave not to go back. One, because I there were so many people who worked there who were lifers, which is great. But I thought I'm too young to go into one role and stay there forever. And that could very easily happen. Two, because my maternity cover who came in to cover my job then basically went out to steal my job. And it was a horrendous situation. And I just was like, I'm just going to cut all ties, do something else. Find another temp role for a privately owned business who was looking for a HR a professional to come in and set up a HR function for them. Um, six month contract again. Um, so I thought, right, it's part time. I wanted to work part time at the time. So I was like, right, I'll do that. So I went in, did that. I was working there for eight years when I started getting itchy feet. They were making business decisions that weren't were involving their people, not bringing me into those until afterwards. I was getting frustrated. I also at that point started to know other business owners who were asking me for HR advice and support. So I quite like doing this sort of hands dirty stuff again and, and advising different types of businesses. So I started then thinking about potentially doing my own thing. Who I was employed with at the time then approached me and said, let me know you, you quite like like um, or thinking about doing your own thing we don't want to lead you from our business why don't you set up as a consultant we'll be your first client you can still work out of our office while you grow the business so really really fortunate to be fair um, that, that they supported me with that and then I just worked really hard to to, to start my business and I had three very young children at the time um, so I used to go out and see clients in the day, do all the admin in the evenings when they were all in bed. And it was tough, but I started, I just enjoyed it from day one, like meeting new people, getting to know different businesses. Um, and it, it grew from there. And now it's, I'm not going to say it's all been easy because I don't think any business owner will tell you that it has. Nobody is an overnight success. I, I believe that. Um, but um, yeah, it, it's been challenging at times. Obviously, starting a business with three young children was hard work. Um, you you know, you you do anything to, to win clients because you're in that stage where you were trying to build your business. So I probably compromised in terms of like fee or, you know, delivering and saying yeah, I could do certain things because I wanted to, to win the business and then you know I've, then I started to hire people that not all of those people worked out for various reasons um and then you throw in a pandemic and, <laughs> and so yeah but I think I can safely say whilst it's been a roller coaster and eight and a half uh, years down the line it it is something I absolutely love running a business and I love now that we are really clear on what we do, the types of businesses we want to work with, how we do that, and the types of people that we're working with, um, and the team that I have now. Um, so yeah, I mean, I have no doubt it's still going to be challenging, and I'm sure you know it will. We'll have our hard times again, but they definitely feel for for few and far between now. And I have learned so much in the last eight and a half years in terms of HR, in terms of business, in terms of myself, than I think I ever would have learned if I had a state in an in-house role. Mm. Wow, fantastic story in terms of that and where you've got to. Congratulations. That, that, that's awesome. So, yeah, uh, as a business owner, we, we there's so much to do. There's so much to think about. There's so many things all the time. And you uh, had uh, three young children even at the time in terms of growing it and developing it. Wow, yeah, absolutely. So how, how do you manage not to get overwhelmed? What's your hints and tips? Mm. Uh, <laughs> um, so... Basically, I'm a swan. No. Um, so, <laughs> aren't we all? Aren't we all? Yeah. So you're right. Running a business is not for the faint-hearted. Um, I've, I, you know, I'm very driven. I, um, I've got extremely high standards. I know I'm not the easiest person to probably live, ask my husband, with or work with. But 
I, I get stressed as I'm sure every business owner does because, you know, we're always trying to do so much, but I think what I've learned over time is you can't do everything all of the time. And also you can't do it all. So um, having a good team around me has been the key, I think, to me, not burning out, not getting overwhelmed, being able to, to now grow the business. I think as well, being able to say no. So understanding the types of people you want to work with, the stuff that you can do really well and saying no to stuff. And I know not every business in this fortune in that position and I wasn't when you're starting a business you need to bring the money in but now to be able to say no I don't want to work with that type of client or no I'm not going to do that project now I'll do it you know I can do it for you but it's going to be in a couple of months um but then outside of that I think rest is really important and something that I didn't do a lot of when I was scaling the business and you know at, obviously at times when you've got a lot of client work on so I do try and now make sure that I'm not working every evening I'm not working weekends and that I'm actually taking time out that I'm having like more than a couple of days off a year like I'm actually taking some holiday and going on holiday okay. and when 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 possible I try and get on my peloton I'm a, I'm a massive fan of my peloton bike i never thought i would be but i got one during lockdown and honestly it's great and i only actually said to my husband this morning because i'm tired at the moment because i did a lot of traveling last week because of work and i haven't been on the peloton and it just starts having a knock-on effect so i'm tired of work so i don't sleep well because i've got my head's buzzing with work so then i'm too tired to get up and go on my peloton and then i don't feel great so i get into this cycle so i know i need to like somehow pause and get back into that cycle of like getting up going on my peloton having a manageable working day week and then getting some better rest. And so, yeah, I think, I think it's easy when you're younger to, to not appreciate health or well being. You just think, Oh, it's fine. Like just, you know, burn the candle at both ends. But as I get older, but as I just be more self-reflective, I understand like the importance of actually looking after yourself is really important. Yes. Yeah. But very, very much so. You know, I, 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 I personally do, uh, sort of 15 minutes of exercise every single morning and uh, and take a lunch break. And I had to force myself to do that, especially when my business partner joined and she said, come on, stop, stop working at lunchtime. So we physically stop and, you know, we, we actually read as well uh, for half an hour at lunchtime to make that physical break in terms of doing stuff to look after yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, from fantastic, fantastic advice there. Brilliant. Thank you so much for that. So you've talked about the team and some some worked out some some didn't so you know you are also do you talked about recruitment as well so how, how have you gone about finding the people that fit your organization and been successful for you to help the growth um yeah it's not always easy and i think anybody who works in recruitment or who is trying to like hire like attract and retain people over the last couple of years will understand it's probably the hardest it's ever been for various reasons but for for me um, it's being honest. So um, I think through that recruitment process, it's being really honest about what it, what the role is going to be, like what it is like working at HR Star. It is fast paced. There is high workloads. I do have high expectations, but also I believe there's great opportunity to learn and, and uh, develop at HR Star that we reward and look after our team really well. But also being clear on the role, what you want from that role and being really clear with that, but also being clear on the type of people that you want in your business. And I, I always say to people, there's nothing wrong with wanting certain things in your business. Now, whether that be that, you know, it's an expectation on working hours or culture, as long as you're really honest and open about it, because then people can decide whether that's right for them or not. What's worse if you say, oh, come and work for us. Like we're, we've got a great work-life balance here. We've got a lovely culture. We, we look after our people. And then they, they turn up and, and it's none of those things. Now, I'm not saying like we should have toxic cultures. Of course not. But what I'm saying is if it is fast paced and, and workloads are high, tell people that because then they can decide whether that's them for for them or not um and so i think honesty through the recruitment process is really important and but that step before that being really clear on what it is you're looking for in terms of for that role for within that person and also being really clear in terms of looking at 
how am I going to reward this person? Because if I want really good people, I'm going to have to make sure that I'm meeting expectations around salary, benefits, working um, environments, et cetera. So I think it's also being just really honest and clear around expectations throughout. And I also want they're on board as well. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, no, very, very true. Very true. Yeah, that's really some thought-provoking things there. So you, your business is growing, yeah, uh, in terms of doing that. How are you, how are you maintaining the culture then? What, what's your HR style way? So we work hybrid and um, I've spoken so much on LinkedIn about this. And this is where I get people up in arms about what I say. Um, and again, it's it's preference, isn't it? And it's what people think. And in my opinion, hybrid works really well. And it works really well for us because we are a people centric business. Um, we've just spent the last two days together in the office, me and the team, and it has been great. We have progressed so much in terms of just work for clients, in terms of ideas that we need to do within the team, because we're all in one room, we're all bouncing ideas off of each other. We've also sat down and did um, um, a, a look at all our clients in terms of what we've got on, where we're at with them. And, and again, we are all feel fully up to date and we've all enjoyed working together. So for me, it's about practicing what I preach. It's about looking at each area of that employee life cycle and making sure that I'm doing everything I can to ensure that my people have a great experience whilst working with HR star for HR star. Um, and I'm really pleased to say that my team give me positive feedback all the time in terms of what they want and need and how much they enjoy working um, for, for me and for the business. But I'm also really open to my team in saying, if there is anything you're not happy with, you don't like or want, you need to talk to me about that. And I, and I do, you know, create that, that culture where we are really honest with each other it is, you know, very much honest. We chat things through. I involve them in terms of business decisions. I share with them like the numbers. I share with them any plans that I have. When we recruit, I make sure that they have a part in that recruitment process. So they, they have a say in whoever's coming into the team. Um, so it's just being really open, honest, collaborative, um, but also I'm really clear on my expectations. They all know I have high standards. They all know like it's fast paced, that I work at pace, that, um, that, you know, our workloads are high, but I'm, I'm really proud to say that right now the team I have thrive off of that and, and it's the best team I've had. Yeah. I, it, it, interesting. Uh, I've, I've watched some of your things on, 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 on LinkedIn and, and, <laughs> and I, you know, I, a thought came to my mind just then. I've just recently finished a book called The The Joy of Work. And uh, he, he talks about in there um, getting rid of the mill owner mentality in our heads. We all have it when we become you know, a leader of a team. And you go, why is that person not working? What's going on around there? What's going on? And it's that mill owner. I just always think that, you know, we have to get rid of that and uh, and really realize that actually helping people achieve and, and do is, is really powerful. I can see exactly your your energy, your enthusiasm and the way the team works and you're bringing them together but still having that chance to you know work where they need to work uh, and, and, and hybrid works in terms of doing that and I, I've run teams that are international uh, and we you know before the world of zoom you know and uh, on webex and stuff and we're very successful teams because it's all about people yes you get that you get oh. anything in leadership yeah. in terms of doing things brilliant brilliant so you talked about the strategic plan. How, 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 you know, how do you go about thinking about what next, where you're going, what you want to achieve? You know, what, what's your your thinking and approach style? Um, so for me, I always want more. I always want better. Um, I'm not very good at being in the moment. Um, I'm always looking at the next thing, what's next. And for me, what's next is working with more of the right times of clients so I can do the the work that we, we're doing with the with our clients now. I know people say it sounds really cliche, but for me, doing the job is everything. Um, and But I also, I, I, I like money. Like I want to be successful in that way because I, I feel for me that opens up other doors in terms of being able to invest that back into my team and the people that I hire and grow, how I grow the business. But also it gives opportunity for my family to be able to take my children to different places around the world and to be able to 
um, you know, future proof, for, you know, retirement and all of those things. So, you know, I want I want to grow it because I want to I want a nice life. I want to be happy. I want my children to be happy. I want my team to be happy. But what's going to drive that is by be, doing the work that I enjoy and love. I have done jobs before I worked in HR where I would literally have that Sunday night dread where I would literally sit at work watching the clock couldn't wait to leave and you you know you live for the weekend and I don't want um anybody really yeah anybody you spend so much of your time at work and nobody should feel that way it should it should give you something work it should make you feel inspired and valued and if I can work with businesses and create that for their teams I will be very happy. And the more I can do that, the happier I will be. <laughs> and cash is cash is king. So, so important. How, how do you look after and manage cash uh, and keep on top of it within the business? So I have an amazing accountant who does that for me. I'm a massive believer that you can't be good at everything and you should use experts to do things for you. Hence why I believe that business leaders who are growing businesses are nine out of 10 not HR professionals. Hence, they should bring them in to help them because they're good at what they do. So just like I'm good at HR, I'm really bad at finance. I do people, not numbers is what I always say. So I have an amazing accountant who looks after all of that stuff for me and helps me in the business ensure that the, the money is well managed, that we do have the, the, the cash flow right, that we do invest in the things that we need to, that, you know, the invoices are paid, uh, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I hats off to accountants. It definitely wouldn't be something I would ever want to do. But my accountant is amazing and she it is worth her weight in gold. So use experts is, is another uh, uh, bit of advice I, I would share. <laughs> and then the, the whole thing about growing a business is finding those clients so the, the, the marketing and then into, into sales but marketing what 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 you know what, what what's been good for you what's worked well in terms of marketing I had a few things I've got to say in terms of you know social media working with different people to do social media um, in the very beginning um, especially pre-covid I used to go to networking events a lot I think, though, for me, in terms of winning clients, the best clients wins that I've had are through referral by doing a really good job for clients and they refer you to other people. So I think doing a really good job is a great piece of marketing relationship building. So, um, for instance, you know, just being able to share your story um, as well. So podcasts like this, obviously, you'll see I'm very, very visible and vocal on LinkedIn. Um, but I, I do believe, it, especially in what I do, because obviously people are trusting us to to look after their people. They have to feel that they can trust um, me and my team. So relationship building is really key. But sharing our message, sharing our story, sharing what we do, why we do it, um, for me has probably now been you know the best bit of marketing I I, I do for the business. Awesome. So um, okay, uh, I'm going to be interesting how you answer this question. Mm -hmm. This is. Uh, if I was to give you a magic wand, okay, mm -hmm. um, what drives you crazy about the industry, HR industry, that you would wave and get rid of with your magic wand? Okay. Um, businesses who think HR can just be added to the office manager's function. So our office manager looks after HR yeah. or ops, our ops person looks after HR. Operations and HR, different. HR and finance, or when they put HR under finance, uh -uh, separate functions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wondered how long the conversation would be around that one, but yes, well done. Yeah, <laughs> totally agree. Totally agree. It is. It is a, uh, a standalone re requirement mm. and thought process within it. But often businesses aren't big enough to do that. So hence, as you say, go find an expert to help you do that. So, so. If we were to meet in five years' time and we're looking back over the last five years, what's happened both professionally and personally for you to think the last five years have been successful? Okay. Um, I think business growth, so having a business where I can I can be more 
leading in you know my team so being able to share my knowledge and experience with my team to enable more people to work at hsr to go out and do what we do for business um to i suppose have some kind of recognition i don't know whether that how how i want that to be but to be recognized as a leader in doing HR differently as a company that, you know, set off on this journey to be different to, and really did lead the way with that. Um, to be able to have more people in my team so I can develop them and, and, you know, create an amazing place to work for as many people as possible professionally, personally, um, my children will be obviously five years older than so, not hopefully not being a taxi to them continually uh but more travel maybe slightly better work-life balance in terms of um yeah less le- less work more peloton more travel <laughs> well Kelly, okay, what a fantastic conversation we've had you know starting H- hr star eight, eight and a half years ago how you've grown and built it one of the key things i think is you practice what you teach so what you help your clients you're doing you demonstrate that through this this conversation how that passion to really develop that employee engagement is so important in a business and hr isn't just a set of procedures and processes that you have sitting on the shelf it's actually how you bring your business alive and you've demonstrated that through some really fantastic thoughts and, and advice around that and and building a people strategy Strategy. What a fantastic thought uh, around what businesses can do to really sort of take them forwards uh, and be successful because successful businesses is all about people. Um, and, and I think that's really demonstrated the discussion about values, discussion about how you hire uh, and find the right people um, has been awesome. And I just love a your energy and your enthusiasm for everything you're doing and and really that that really key one which i picked up on already is that you you do what you say you do and and that's the real um you know, the real honesty that, that comes out which then people will buy into if they wish to un- achieve that same success within their own businesses so thank you so much for this conversation we we finish with a quick fire round okay um so um if you'd go back to the younger your younger self what advice would you give yourself start sooner um as much as obviously my previous hr experience set me up in a good place to start the business um i wish i'd started sooner so yeah start sooner brilliant Which books do you recommend? Um, I love the Brené Brown books. Um, I also love a book called Traction. So business leaders, I recommend reading that one. Um, Yeah, so I do do quite like businessy type books. Um, Also, um, um, yeah, I I do really listen to a lot of podcasts and audios. But yeah, book wise, I definitely say Traction, Brené Brown, like on my top of my list. Yeah, I'm on the shelf behind me. Yeah, and, I see that. Uh, podcasts. <laughs> um, massive fan of the Diary of a CEO, and I kind of feel like I always have to like kind of cover that with. I listened to the Diary of a CEO like when he first started, when he literally used to record it in a cupboard in his apartment, Stephen Bartlett, before he had like big guests. When it just used to be him chatting, um, so I loved it then, and I do love it now because obviously the guests that he gets on there like are really some of them so interesting, and when I'm traveling a lot to clients. So recently, I've been traveling down to Exeter quite a lot. I was in Cardiff earlier this week. And so it's a great opportunity to listen. So, um, yeah, I do I do love the, the Diary of CEO. Awesome. Um, onto your mobile phone, are there any apps that uh, make a difference for you? Um, oh, see, I'm a, bit, I'm a bit bad, like, in terms of my apps. So, like, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of an uh, Instagram lover. And I've just started getting into threads. So, um, yeah, um, in terms of that apps are around for my social media oh and my banking apps i love to be able to just at the press of a button just check in on the finances <laughs> and my, my favorite question of all who's had the most influence on you as a business leader oh god um wow what a question um number of people to be fair like different people i've worked with clients other business owners um obviously yeah just from 
following uh, entrepreneur's journey. Obviously, they like listen to Dara's CEO. So I probably couldn't put it down to one person. So I've worked with different like business coaches and therapists myself. So I just think it, that's been a journey depending on different people who've like come in and out of my life during the time that I have been running the business. And, and finally, Kelly, thank you for that. How can people get hold of you? So I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Kelly Tucker, um, very vocal on LinkedIn, um, but also um, they can contact me via LinkedIn or via our website, which is hr-star.co.uk or kelly tucker at hr-star.co.uk via email. Awesome. Kelly, thank you so much for this fantastic conversation today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed that discussion. And if you're building and scaling your own business, you might well be interested in our book, The Entrepreneurial Scale-Up System. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a practical handbook around scaling a business in a structured way. And you can order a copy on all your favorite online retailers, including an audio version, or you can find it and other supporting resources on our website, www.esusgroup.co.uk. That's esusgroup.co.uk, which is E-S-U-S-G-R-O-U-P.co.uk. This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast.